Very, very good guess. He breaks down Detroit Lions football and a little bit of Detroit Pistons. But you know what? Let's let's keep the conversation positive. Let's welcome in our good friend Corey to the show. Please welcome M Live's own Corey Woods. Corey, let me get you on here. Corey, how you doing, my uh, man? Uh, oh, hold up. Ah, uh, you're muted, Corey. Hey, see, that's the dad status. You know, there he's got a go. kid, so you know, he, it's the dad status. Got fair, him fair. Him. He's good now. He's good. Here now. we go. We good now. Let's yeah, go. yeah. Oh, hey, there okay. you go, Corey. What's going on, man? <laughs> Sorry about that. Hey, how you doing? Good. Uh, we were just talking earlier about uh, just training camp and what's been going. I know you're not there, but I, I want your thoughts on just a couple of storylines that that have been going on for training camp um, because it's been pretty much the same stuff. I mean, you have Jamison Williams playing well in New York and, and making some plays. So I guess we'll start with him. Uh, what has been your uh, takeaways from Jamison Williams? And, and I asked John this question too because you were there and you've been watching him since he got to Detroit. What has been some of the more things that you've seen him improve on? What, what are things that have shocked you about JMO that maybe he's developed or what has been different from past years to this year with, with Jamison Williams? I'd love to hear your opinion on that. Well, first off, I'm going to start with his physique. Jamison Williams, and this I actually can't believe I'm about to say this, but dare I say Jamison Williams looks faster than he Ooh. did last year. I mean, it's kind of wild to say, you know, at first when they had on their pajamas, as they like, as they like to call their, or Dan Campbell says they're playing in their underwear, you couldn't really get a good feel of how, if he really improved his speed or not, because, I mean, they didn't have one full pass. But, I mean, when they got in the full pass, the guy just, he's just blazing speed. Um, one thing, another thing that you can see about him is that he's, looked like he's put on a little bit of weight. I'm not going to, I guess if I, if I had to guess, maybe about, 10 somewhere 10 to 15 pounds i could be wrong but he definitely looks a lot bigger and more in, in um in better shape than he did last year and let's go to his mentality jmo was kind of like a little bit of a quiet guy that i observed last year on the sidelines i mean you start you start to see his personality um open up a little bit more always a guy that was cheering for his teammates but this year this camp he is very animated um, anytime his teammates make a great play, he is always out there, first one on the field, running, running up to him, and you know, showing them their props and their respect. He's been so he's been a great teammate guy, at least from my opinion. As far as um, just how he performs after a play, I mean, this guy's been just been smoking some of the secondary pretty, pretty badly, and he's been getting into it with AG a couple of times. They've, they've been, it's, I don't think it's anything bad. I don't think it's anything bad, but you know, I like you see them barking at, you see, you see them barking at each other during, during practice. And then the, 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 the one time that really got intense is where, you know, Scotty Montgomery joined it on us. I guess as uh, one of the guys, uh, beat writer said, Scott, uh, AG found his new Deuce Stanley because you know, those guys used to go back and forth, but, um, J-Mo's been good. I, I, I think I'm, I'm impressed with what I've seen. He looks like he's ready to go ahead and step up and take that number one uh, wide or number two wide out position because you know that I'm a round number one. And the timing between him and golf, it looked like it's still a little bit of – it looked like it's getting better. I won't say it's 100% there yet, but it definitely looks better than it did last year's camp. I love to hear that, Corey. I love the J-Mo, the confidence and everything that's kind of coming off of him is, is – I love seeing that. Um, I do want to stick in the wide receiver room. I think everyone, at least for me, and I asked this. Oh, no. Can you guys see me? You're good, Boone. Just keep going. All right. I lost me for a second. Um, but obviously, we're all talking about the wide receiver kind of four back. I know it's just it's Amon Ross St. Brown, Jamison Williams, and then uh, Khalif Raymond. But there's this battle right now with, with, with Fountain, uh, DPJ, Antoine Green. And then today, Dan Campbell mentioned Caden Davis as well. What's, what's your thoughts on that? We've been pretty big, at least I have, um, on Fountain kind of stepping up. And, and when we went to training camp for a couple of days, he just looks so consistent and so reliable. And it seems like him and Jared Goff are kind of getting that Josh Reynolds connection to where he trusts him a ton. And you can kind of get that feeling. Do you kind of see him getting that spot? Or where do you see that going with the, now the DPJ and Antoine Green thing um, kind of backing them up? Well, no disrespect to Khalif Raymond. I know we all saw that unofficial uh, depth chart that came up. But I, I actually think Khalif um, – the uh, fountain could actually step up and challenge for that wide receiver three spot as well. I mean, don't yeah. leave him out the mix for that one because I mean, he's been having a phenomenal camp so Love far that. and um, he's been his route running the, the way he just goes after just makes a play that has been really on display this entire camp. And that, and um, also DPJ too, he's been looking pretty good as well in one-on-one -on -one drills and, and in the office. But again, it's like you just guys just said, fountain is the guy that I think that not just for that wide receiver four role, he could challenge for that, for that WR3 role as well. And just like Dan Campbell said last week, they want to see more out of it. I mean, this 
that Josh Reynolds um, departure it really left the void in. It's a three man race right now for who can step up. I mean, it, it could really be any one of those guys, to be quite honest. And so just kind of going off of that real quick, Corey, is it, do you think Fountain's pretty much a lock to make this roster? Ooh, I, I think it did. I think we'll see how he does over these over these preseason games because I mean it's one thing to look good in practice, but if he's not showing that out there on the game versus the Giants and then the Chiefs and whatnot, then I mean I, I wouldn't expect it. But if you just have to go off of that small sample size and that shows up in the game, yeah, I think he would definitely be a, a solid lock to make this team. Absolutely, okay. because like you, because because again, they already trust. The three guys that you can say Jared Goff trust are, um, well, let's just say two for right now, as far as the receivers go. Um, St. Brown and Raymond. He's developing the chemistry with Williams, and we know he's not going anywhere. So it's really those other guys, you know what I'm saying, that are trying to, like, make their way. And I definitely think that Fountain is starting to creep up in that position of making a name for himself. I think there were a lot of people that were high on Antoine Green going into this camp, and I think Fountain is the one that's really kind of – Take in uh, the leap that me and you were expecting Green to make. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I'm excited to see that play out. Another position I think a lot of Lions fans that question about is that nickel spot. I know Brian Branch hasn't been healthy heading into camp, especially with the 11 on 11s today. He was out there for the seven on sevens. But from what you've seen so far, I know they even put Emmanuel Mosley in there at times. What do you think is going to happen there from just what you've seen so so far in camp? I think as of right now. If they're if they're it depends on how they plan to go with Branch. If they're planning to bring him around, you know, try him around there a little bit slowly. I can see them trying to figure out what they got with Emmanuel um, Mosley. But I mean, if Brian Branch is healthy, I mean, you got to think that he has a lock on on that spot, especially if he did, if he gets back to the way he that he was looking, especially when he came out the gate early last season. So I think right now it's still Branch's spot to lose, but it just depends on how they want to trot him along um, when they get out there. Yeah, Corey, I mean, uh, another kind of big storyline, at least today, coming from uh, – and this comes from training camp. It's not specifically like a joint practice question, but the secondary and people talking about how the secondary is – you know, they they struggle a little bit today, the defensive line. Where are you at with what you've seen being at, at Allen Park with just this defense? I mean, guys like Levi and Zarike kind of showing out and showing more and more. What What's your confidence level that this defense uh, – and they don't have to be the best defense in the league, but for based on what you've seen so far with those with the uh, offense versus the defense, where are you at with this defense and specifically that secondary? We know how good the run defense is. In the pass rush, uh, you know, with DJ Reader coming back, should be upgraded, obviously. But where are you at with, with how good the defense can be and specifically that secondary based on last year because they got new faces this year at corner? So far, the secondary has looked good out there. Um, I haven't really seen too many picks, to be quite honest, because, I mean, Jared Goff has been pretty clean with the ball. Mainly some of the picks that I've seen have come from when they when they go with the, when they shuffle it out there with the other quarterbacks like Kendra Hooker. He threw a pretty bad pick to the third team last week. But and when, you, when you're looking at that secondary, you got to think they, the Lions had one of the worst secondaries in the league last year and they still made that NFC title game. And they went ahead and overhauled it with guys like a. Carlton Davis, um, you grabbed you grabbed Terry and Arnold and Red Straw, guys that have so far been having um decent solid camps. And then you bring you still got Emmanuel Mosley bringing him back. And then if he's and if he's just healthy and he's been playing out, he's been playing some solid, solid football out there, especially, you know, just you know, getting out there and getting in the backfield and this. He tore. I forget who it was. I want to say it was David Montgomery. I could be wrong. He tore one of the running backs up the last week pretty badly. Um Ooh, they got a they got a tough schedule. I think they could possibly get back to, you know, the playoffs for sure. But where this secondary is at, I think Lions fans are going to be feel very good about it because the coverage is out there, the attention to detail is out there. Aaron Glenn is on is is on them guys, and they're looking pretty good in coverage on the wide receivers. But again, it's all gonna we're we're gonna really get a good look at where they're at on Thursday when they go ahead and play the Giants. Cause like it's good, like I said, they all look good right now in practice, but when they get out there in front of some competition. Um, when it matters, this day we're going to really see. Hey, Corey, just to follow up on the defense, the the, the defensive line and that edge outside of Hutch, what, what have you seen and, like, what is your kind of prediction here with, with how that rotation looks going into the uh, season? I know the Levi, oh, they had him. It's When we were there, they had him at edge. Um, you know, obviously Davenport is back now, um, but you have Josh Pascal. Like, I haven't heard much about him, and Matthew Betts has been dropping off a little bit. What do you see that rotation looking like? And – is the rotation good enough to kind of take that step forward with Hutch? Obviously, Hutch, DJ Reader, and Aleem are, are going to be, you know, on a big time trio there. But that other, that last spot there, 
What, what do you see that looking like going into the season and kind of throughout the whole year? I'm going to be quite honest. I'm still kind of iffy on that one. Um, they've been trying a little bit of different things out there. I haven't seen um, Derek Barnes lined up on the, on the opposite side of um, – and Hutch some some interesting packages. So I'm curious to see what they're going to go ahead and do out there with that with that unit. Obviously, they're going to need um, Marcus Davenport to be fully healthy, and that's a guy that they're really banking on. Josh Pascal, I think this is going to be a, a make it or break it year for him, and, and where he falls into the um, into the rotation. But I'm gonna be honest; I'm still kind of iffy on that. I think I need to see a little bit more. Um, when I was out there at Allen Park, a lot of the focus that I was having on was more so on that on the offensive side of the ball and looking at that secondary. So I'm still kind of, um, I guess you could say, null and void on my opinions on that on that defensive line. But I, I think they definitely gonna need guys like Lee Vaon Zarike to go ahead and step up to make him to make an impact on him. And he's been having a solid camp so far. The, the coaches are very impressed with where he is at. And this is what is needed from him because they're really high on him when they when they when they took him. And kind of just real quick, I know you said you were paying more attention to the offensive side core behind him. And we had we had a conversation about this uh Friday or was it Thursday? But Jack Campbell, and I think we're not worried about Jack Campbell the regular season, especially when you have him with Kelvin Shepard with his development but i think there was more anticipated noise than we've gotten so far with jack campbell how is he doing so far in training camp as far as the development how he looks going into year two jack campbell's looking good to me i mean the intensity is there he's still as ferocious he's been good in coverage he's been getting aggressive and getting to the um getting to the ball he's been looking really good in the run defense as well so i mean i think i think jack campbell is having a solid camp i think i don't think that um i don't think not hearing anything about him as far as in the headlines is a is a bad thing because I mean that could work both ways. If you're hearing if you're hearing some bad stuff about him, then that's not good either. I think mm -hmm. he's just having an all around solid camp and playing some good football, which is pretty much what they expected out of him. Yeah, you know, and you know, I'm glad we we had a conversation about it, me and Boone, and, and my thing was. We were having a conversation in the car, and I'm like, he just haven't really heard a lot about Jack Campbell. And Booner, I'll give him credit. He was like, maybe it's a good thing. I mean, he's just solid Jack Campbell. And, and I was always curious with that. I'm like, I wonder if, you know, maybe it's you want more because you expect, like, I expect him to have a big year, or he's just Jack and you know what he brings. Like, so I, I get that perspective. I want to ask you this, um, at least uh, looking at this team currently, um, and then just seeing what's been transpiring in training camp because we were there and you got to see. Um, some guys making plays. Ennis Rakestraw being one of those guys. Uh, he he and he's been kind of moving up the ranks. He was kind of limited to start, um, but then he had a great at least close uh, to training camp uh, with with the offense versus the defense. And he's playing with the second team, but still, what what are your thoughts on Ennis Rakestraw and what kind of noise he can make this year? Because they they got him trying out at nickel, you know, and it could be a, a position change for him. But the dude can play ball. But what have you seen from Ennis Rakestraw kind of coming back from uh, the injury? He's been getting after it. I mean, he's been playing. He's been really good at coverage, um, pass deflections, um, covering, and he's been really good in coverage. I think that this is a guy that can really make a name for himself. I don't know, maybe not right out the back, but I mean, somewhere near, somewhere if they need, if it's part of that rotation. And if somebody goes down, I mean, this could be a guy that could step up and, um, be something real special for them. And you see what he, she's showing flashes as far as his confidence out there on the field of why Brad, um, Brad Holmes went ahead and took back to back DBs in this year's draft. And I think that he's going to be a guy that could be one of their anchors for years to come. Um, it's like, but the thing is, I want to see how he does in the game. He, but again, as far as practice, he's a guy that has not backed down from any challenge and he looks good. Hey, court. Yeah, I love to hear that. The Rakeshaw stuff, I love that. Uh, Corey, it's 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 technically game week here for the first preseason game. What are you kind of, and, and at least for the listeners here, what are you kind of looking for um, when it comes to to matchups or, or just really just players like who might be on the cut line and that that you're going to keep an eye on on Thursday? Like, hey, this is a guy who needs to have a big game, or he he might be out of a job here going at, over the next few weeks. Um, who are some players to keep an eye on? Um, a couple of guys that I'm going to be keeping my eye on is let me keep them as much as people talked about the wide receiver battles and these cornerback battles. I'm going to be looking at their running back battle. Obviously, we know that David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs have that RB1, RB2 on lock, but I'm looking, I'm looking to see what's going to come out of those other guys. You know, the Craig Reynolds, the Bam Knights. I mean, J Jamar um, Jefferson, who's who's been playing some really good football in this year's camp. I'm looking to see who's going to be the guy that can go ahead and make a name for himself and step up in there. Um, Bam Knight, that is just one guy who is just 
like a, like Emmanuel Mosley, who was just really happy to be back at injury, be out on the field. So was Bam Might. I had a really good conversation with him. And while he's looking to go ahead and make a name for himself in that role, he's just happy to be back out there in the field. And he says that he cannot wait for this preseason game because he said that Lions fans – have truly not seen his real explosiveness yet as a as a back as a backer. He said they have not seen a 200 to two, 215, 200 pound backer get out the backfield like I can. And he's looking to showcase that this week. So that's a, that's a, again that's a battle. If Bam Light is able to step up and be as explosive as he claims to be, just imagine pairing him in a rotation with a um with the with the Jameer Gibbs and the David Montgomery. So I'm looking at that running back battle uh, most definitely. Uh, Vaki, I'm going to be excited to watch. And somewhere that I think the Lions can use, use him is on a kick return spot. And, Corey, when you're down at camp, I think the kick return, with how the kickoff's been changed, it's a really intriguing thing to look at with who the Lions are going to go with because we went to camp on Wednesday, and they had Jamo, they had Amon Ra, they had Jameer Gibbs, and I'm like, please do not put those guys back there on kickoff. But what do you think they're actually going to do? Because there is a chance that they do put out – a really good player that can make a difference on kick return to set up the offense for more success. So when you're at, when you're at camp, who do you think they're going to be putting out there, at least for the preseason? I would be very, very shocked if they do not put Maurice Alexander out there on, on kick return. That is a guy who's just been doing well in over the past couple of years. So I think that's a guy that you're going to be able to see step up and hopefully make a name for himself in this rotation as far as um, just what he can do out there on the field. I don't. I, I know they have Calhoun from Duke. I haven't really seen him out there, but you never really know if they could kind of float them out, float him out there, and try to see what he see what he can do. Um, I've seen DPJ back there a couple of times, but I think the real, but I think the guy that's really going to be out there on day on when we see this preseason game is going to be more Reese Alexander, maybe Khalif Raymond as well. And kind of because we talked about this when we were at camp, Maurice Alexander got even last preseason, he was making plays against the Giants, taking back kickoffs. Do you think what what's the likelihood that he actually makes the Detroit Lions active roster this year? It depends on how many players they decide to keep at that at that wide receiver position. Um, I, I, I'm under the mindset that he will make he will make the team. Um, he just he just proven himself to be a valuable commodity in, in that regard. So I would be pretty shocked if he does not make the team. All I've been reading, Corey, uh, and you know, it's it's the take that has not been aging well. I will admit, is Hendon Hooker. I uh, and I and I'll say this. All right, we I get it. It's it's his first true. He's participating in all in the off season in training camp. Uh, he has not looked good. He's been playing with a third team. Nate Sudfeld's beating him out, Corey. Not a storyline I like to read, but I will say uh, he's a guy that I think will will start coming along, I think, in the season, during the season, as the season continues. I, I don't think it was realistic of me to expect him to be ready to be the backup quarterback week one. What have you seen from Hendon Hooker in kind of the growth or or regression? Uh, what have you seen from Hendon Hooker so far? Um, As far as Hendon Hooker, I'm just going to be quite honest. When you look at him as far as his power, his velocity with the ball, it's there. I mean, he can sling the rock. But his accuracy has been up and down. It's been it's been very inconsistent all over. Some overthrows, some like I said, he threw a bad pick. Um, I, I don't even know where the ball was going when he where he was looking at. And the one thing that I've just been noticing constantly from him that he holds on to the ball too long and he, they're not sacking the quarterback in, in practice, but I believe it will be a wake-up call if he holds onto the ball that much if we see him out there on Thursday versus the Giants. So it, it, it's it's not he, he's not looking bad. He's made some great throws, but it's just been he's been largely inconsistent. And yeah, I, I, if I had to say right now, I would say Sudfeld is beating him out for that backup to to Jer the backup role to Jared Goff, and it's basically because he's just been all over the place. But again. Give him some time. Let's see how he looks, in, you know, in, in the game. Let's see how he looks over these next couple of practices. But so far, it, it hasn't been the greatest showing for him, though. Uh, you know what? It's all right. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Hey, you know, hey, it's all good. Uh, Court, we appreciate you. You can check Corey out at Corey E. Woods. Uh, covers the Detroit Lions and Detroit Pistons for M MLive. Uh, Corey, we'll talk to you soon, my man. Appreciate you joining the show. Killing it, as always. Appreciate you, Corey. Thanks. My guy. All right, there you go. Corey Woods, check his stuff out uh, because he is the man.